Well, this, if, if you couldn't hear, can you hear? He pointed out that Whitehead argued that things have various aspects, physical, mental, abstract, and so on, and you make mistakes by confusing them. And uh, one can ask the question, to what extent mathematics the, what might think of as the most pure or abstract human language is capable of mediating these things, something like that. Well, here we have to be kind of cautious. Uh, contemporary philosophers like Whitehead uh, talk about the difference between physical and mental as if that means something, but it doesn't mean anything because we have no notion of physical. That's the Newtonian discovery. There is no notion of physical. So we can't talk about the difference between physical and mental. We can only talk about different aspects of the world. Uh, there, the old concept of physical, you know, the one in the mechanical philosophy, that's gone forever. And nobody's ever invented a new one, and no, no scientist would even try. The physical is whatever there is. You know, that's the physical. Uh, and among the things there are, are the mental aspects of the world, like thought, say. Uh, what, a, what is an abstract object? Well, that's a kind of a curious notion. Uh, for example, the things that scientists study are abstract objects. Like, a a, say, somebody, somebody studying planetary motion, for example. I mean, they're not, you know, a, a theory of planetary motion isn't concerned with, you know, asteroids going by or the effects of Alpha Centauri or, you know, all sorts of other stuff. They're studying, an they're studying planetary motion in abstraction from the full complexity. And you're always studying things in abstraction from the full complexity. Actually, that's why people do experiments. The point of doing experiments is to try to get rid of a lot of the complexity of the natural world that somehow you assume isn't relevant. Of course, you can't do it 100% because the world is always there. But the point of experiments is to try to get rid of as much as you can. So I suppose a geneticist is studying fruit flies or something. Uh, the geneticist is going to want to make those fruit flies as identical as possible and will pretend they are in fact identical, but of course knows perfectly well that they aren't. Uh, but what you're doing is studying them in abstraction from a lot of their properties. So everything we're studying is an abstract object. There's no way to proceed in any other term. Uh, this is sometimes called idealization, but that's a highly misleading term because idealization s suggests to people that you're moving away from reality, and it's the opposite. You do idealization because you're trying to get to reality. You're trying to cut away the interfering factors that keep you from understanding reality. So therefore, you idealize to abstract things. Uh, but that's a way of finding out what reality is. You know, it's not just this massive junk going on around you. That's a useless mess. Uh, you want to understand reality, you're going to have to try to find out what's going on, which means abstracting and idealizing and so on. Uh, this is the core of science since, since Galileo. And Whitehead, of all people, should have known it. He did very important work on the 17th century. So these concepts, we can't really make a lot of sense out of. Uh, he certainly would. Yeah. Or now. But now they don't mean anything. I mean, now there is no physical mental distinction because there's no physical. Okay. And as far as abstraction is concerned, it's a complicated idea. Uh, but there's still, I'm not saying there's nothing to the point. There is, but we have to be careful in thinking about what he meant by it. You know. uh, he's not introducing polar distinctions of the kind that might come to mind if you don't think too hard. Uh, but uh, what about mathematics as uh, you know, an ideal language? Well, that's a metaphor. I mean, asking to say that language, uh, mathematics is a language is just a metaphoric use of the notion of language. I mean, it's a little bit like saying, suppose somebody were to say, look, humans can really fly. In fact, at the last Olympics, they flew about 30 feet or so, uh, which is, after all, not very different from chickens. You know, the, the championship for chicken flight, I think, is around 300 feet, you know, one order of magnitude, no, no big deal. Uh, so chick people fly kind of like chickens, and they're both very different from eagles. You know. Well, I mean, maybe some Martian didn't understand what organisms are like might say that, but it'd be a really stupid comment. I mean, it's true that humans fly more or less like chickens and neither are like eagles, but that's not the way it works. Chickens fly like eagles and humans don't fly at all, you know, uh, even though there are homologous organs involved in this case, like, you know, arms are sort of homologous to wings. 
Uh, but uh, so to say that humans fly would be kind of like a metaphor. It would be like saying submarines swim or something. <coughs> yeah, you can say it if you want, but it's just metaphoric. And the same is true when you say that mathematics is a language. It certainly doesn't have the properties of human language. A human language is a natural phenomenon, you know, uh, which is part of the biological world. Mathematics shares some properties with it. But, you know, it doesn't have most of the properties of language, and it has properties that language doesn't have. Uh, mathematics is a human creation. I mean, it's, if you're a sort of a Platonist, you know, you think there really are numbers out there, uh, then, which most mathematicians do, and it's not a dumb idea, it's hard to think of any other intelligible explanation of the fact that you can discover truths of arithmetic, but whatever that means, uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's, not it, it's not like language. I mean, you use natural language in doing mathematics, but you use it in doing everything else, too. You know? uh, and when you're really doing technical mathematics, you sort of discard the language side. I mean, you may use it informally, you know, when you're talking to your students and colleagues, but you mean them to understand that it's really something else, you know, and they should throw away all the connotations and so on. Uh, the uh, so, so it's, it's, it, you can't really answer the question. I mean, ma mathematics is what it is, you know. Uh, as to whether mathematics is a way of bringing things together, well, w w I mean, ha that's a question of applied mathematics. How can you use mathematics in dealing with the world? And the answer is that as your conception of things gets clearer and clearer, you know, you can move closer and closer towards giving what we call mathematical formulations, which just mean precise formulations. Uh, we call it mathematics when it's simple enough. Mathematics, mathematicians have, you know, a kind of a, a special uh, dispensation that scientists don't have. They're allowed to stop working when it gets too complicated. So they, in fact, it's kind of like a joke among mathematicians that the only numbers that exist are one, two, maybe three, and infinity. The others are just too complicated to think about. Uh, and uh, there's something to that. I mean, mathematics, you know, real mathematics is the study of extremely simple structures. And sometimes the study of extremely simple structures happens to shed surprising light on the nature of the world. That's when you have applied mathematics. But uh, most of the time that doesn't happen. So nobody does a mathematics of biology or something like that. Because the things you understand are just way too complicated to have any interesting mathematics about. Mathematics, you have mathematics when you start proving theorems and that sort of thing. Uh, and in the case of language, I mean, you know, there's, I mean, I've worked on it too. There's a thing called mathematical linguistics, which is the study of systems that have some of the properties of language, but are simplified enough so you can actually prove some theorems about them. And, you know, it's of whatever interest it is. I mean, you have to <laughs> look and see, but uh, uh, it's like studying other systems that you abstract from reality and investigate because they're interesting on their own. Maybe because you hope to learn something about the real world by looking at their properties. But there's no other sense in which mathematics can mediate between things. 